Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to solve a logarithmic equation. Now, I'm going to show you first two equality statements, which will be useful when solving an exponential equation or a logarithmic equation. So given these variables, c, l, and r, and they are all greater than 0, and c doesn't equal 1, then what I can do is, if l is equal to r, then if I log the left side, that should equal to the log of the right side. Now I can use a base of 10, or I can use any base. So I'm going to put a little c to show that's any base. Now, in reverse, if we have a log equal to another log, and the bases are the same, you can see that these bases are both c, then we can say that l is equal to r. So the value on the left is equal to the value on the right. All right, let's take a look at some steps to solve a logarithmic equation. All right, so to use, um, sorry, so the first step is to use the log laws. So what we want to do is to get a single log on each side with no coefficients. So if they are coefficients, make sure you move them to be the exponent on the value. Or the other option is to get a single log on one side and a constant number on the other side. Now, if there is a single log on each side, you can now remove the single log from each side. Or if it's the second one where you have a single log and a constant, you can now rewrite the equation in exponential form. Now, this is maybe a little bit confusing, but I'll show you both of these cases in a little bit. And then you solve for x. Now, it's really important uh, that you check for extraneous roots uh, by substituting your solution back into the original equation. And then determining whether all the logarithms are defined. So let's take a look at an example. All right, so in this first one here, we have log x equals 1 plus log 2, both with a base 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the logs to the left side. So I have log x with a base of 5 minus log 2 with a base of 5, and that equals 1. All right, so I'm going to use my log laws to combine the left side into a single log. Okay, we already have no coefficients, so that's good. So I'm going to divide x and 2, and that equals 1. So now I'm going to use the second part. So it says otherwise, so if I don't have a single log on each side, I'm going to do the second part, which is rewrite the equation in exponential form. So now I'm going to rewrite this as 5 to the power of 1, which equals x over 2. Now I just have to times both sides by 2, so x is equal to 10. Now what we want to do is we want to check the um, solution by plugging into the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x is 10, plug it in here, and log 10 is OK. Now the other way that you can check is to write the restrictions beforehand, and then check to see if your solution satisfies the restriction. So here we know that we have x, and the value that we log has to be greater than, than 0, sorry. And x is 10, 10 is greater than 0, so 10 is a solution. All right, in the second question, we have all of these expressions having a log in them. So um, actually, before we start, let's write the restrictions for each one. So here we have x plus 11. So that means that x has to be greater than negative 11. In the second log, we have x has to be greater than 0. And in the third expression, x has to be greater than negative 1. All right, so now let's proceed. So we can combine the logs on the left side by multiplication. So we have x plus 11 times x. So now we have x squared plus 11x. 
on the right side, it's also multiplication because we're adding. So we have log 6x plus 6. All right, so now we can remove or ignore the logs, actually. We're not canceling the log. So remember that log is actually not a number, okay? Log is kind of like a square root symbol. It's something that you do. So we're going to remove the logs from both sides because both of them have a base of 10. So now we know that x squared plus 11x equals 6x plus 6. So move everything to the, the left side. So we get x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Now we can actually factor. So we have x plus 6 and x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals negative 6 and positive 1. All right, so taking a look at our restrictions, it says that x has to be greater than negative 11, x has to be greater than 0, and x has to be greater than negative 1. Now, we, these are a lot of different restrictions here. However, the one in the middle is the most restrictive because if I have a number greater than negative 11, let's just say it was negative 10, it does satisfy the first log, but it doesn't satisfy the second or the third log. So, therefore, the most restricted of all of these restrictions is x is greater than 0. So, since negative 6 is not greater than 0, we say that x equals negative 6 is an extraneous root, or I'm just going to say it's extraneous. So, therefore, x is just equal to 1. All right, let's take a look at one more type of example, one that's actually different from the other two. So here I have log base four x squared, and then on the right side I have log base four x, but then the whole expression is squared. All right, so the first thing I do wanna do is to write down the restrictions. So here I know that x has to be greater than zero since both of them just have a log x. All right, so in order for us to solve this one, we're gonna do something a little bit different because we don't have any rule uh, where it's log x with a base four and the whole log expression is squared. So what I'm gonna do first is actually to move the two and the exponent to be the coefficient in the front. So now I have two log four, sorry, two log x base four equals log x base four all squared. All right, now to help us visualize, I'm going to actually write a let statement. So let a equals log x base 4. All right, so what this means is now everywhere I see, sorry, log x with a base 4, I'm going to replace it with a. So here I have now 2a equals 2a squared. All right, this is a lot easier to solve. So move everything to one side. I have a squared minus 2a. I can factor. So I have a bracket a minus 2. So my two answers for a are 0 and 2. All right, so it's OK for a to be 0. So let's now replug the a value back into my let statement. So I have log base 4x equals 0, and I have log base 4x equals 2. Okay, so I'm taking my a values 0 and 2, and I'm plugging it into the a value. So now I'm going to solve for x. So x is equal to 4 to the power of 0, x equals 1. Does that satisfy? Yes, it does, because 1 is bigger than 0. So that is one of my solutions. Okay, and my second solution, x is equal to 4 to the power of 2. So x equals 16. And that's my second solution. So when you see an expression uh, where it's squared or maybe even cubed or maybe even has a power of 4, what you want to do is to write a let statement to make it easier for you. So you can solve the expression uh, just as if it was a polynomial and then go back and do the substitution so that you can now solve for x or whatever the variable was at the beginning.
and then that's it.